Hello, it's Bob here again from Insidium. It's Top Tip Tuesday time, and today we're going to be using Nexus. We're going to use Nexus constraints to create a reactive chain reaction constraint simulation. So, let's start. In our scene then, we have two pieces of geometry. This cylinder, which we'll be using a little bit later. We'll just make that uh, invisible for now. And we've got a floor plane. Both have an X-Particles Collider tag on. And then we have an emitter, which is emitting these particles. If we go to the Object tab, you can see it's set to Object Emitter Shape. And the object is the floor plane, we're emitting from the polygon area. And in the Emission tab, it is a shot of 6,000 particles and we have a radius of three. So we're going to connect these particles together using springy constraints. Let's go to Nexus and we'll bring in an NX constraints. And the constraint type, if we go to the object tab, we want to connect them at birth. And we want to connect any one particle, connect uh, can connect to up to three other particles as long as they are within a distance of 65 centimeter radius, uh, a stiffness of say 60% and they will break at that spring if it is stretched by more than 150% of its uh, birth connection distance. Okay, so if we go forward a frame now, our particles are linked by these yellow constraints. Um, this display isn't on by default. To look at the constraints, you have to go to the XP emitter, display, and you have to make sure that display constraints is active. Okay, and now we have these constraints. If we hit play, nothing happens because we haven't got any other dynamics in the scene. So I'm just gonna make the plane invisible. We're going to add another constraint now, and we're going to add particle-to-particle -particle collisions so they'll interact with each other. Let's go to the Add Constraint, Add a Collisions, and we're also going to increase the accuracy of this simulation and put the iterations up to 8. This will also make your constraints stiffer. So now if we hit Play, because those particles are born um, intersecting, some of which are intersecting, they're pushing against each other. And you can see we're starting to get a bit of movement. The particles are colliding and pushing against each other, but the springs are keeping them together. Okay, so we've got the basis of our simulation. Now we need to bring in the control. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale up our particles. And to do that, we're going to use a Nexus NX Scale modifier. We'll set the parameter to change to particle radius, yeah, but the operation, we want to set the value, and we'll begin just with a value of 10. So now every particle just has a radius value of 10, which is not what we want, but now they're bigger, look how much more they're moving and bouncing off each other. We're going to map this radius value to how far the particles have traveled. So to do that, we'll go to the mapping tab, and we're gonna add a, look, there's a distance, a particle distance map, how far it's traveled. Let's bring that in. And the parameter we want to map to how far the particle's traveled is not the variation, is the radius value, that value that we set, 10 centimeters. So this is saying when the particle hasn't traveled anywhere, it will have zero radius. And as it starts traveling further and further, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it reaches 100 centimeters and it will be 10 centimeters in radius. Uh, we need to set that max range to 100 centimeters distance. Okay, cool. But we don't want it to be like this. We're gonna bring it both down and we're gonna add a knot, hold control, click, bring this up. And what this is saying is the particles will grow from zero right up to 10 centimeters after they've only traveled, you know, probably 10 centimeters and then they'll gradually get smaller and smaller. So if we hit play now, we're not going to see any movement because none of the particles are knocking into each other because they have no radius and we've just kind of got this static sim. So this is where we're going to bring in our cylinder collision object, this cylinder here. Because if we move this, it will knock into the particles, then they'll knock into the other ones and it will begin our chain reaction. So if we hit play, let's grab our cylinder, let's move it slightly. Yeah, look, and there's the chain reaction. They move, they scale up, they knock into other ones, which move, scale up, knock into others, and we can see the effect uh, taking hold. They're all floating up at the minute, though. And we don't want that, so we're going to bring a gravity into the scene. Let's go to Nexus, and we'll go NX Gravity. There you are. And we'll leave it default, 
but we're going to do a similar map with a gravity strength. We don't want this to apply to static particles, only when they start moving. So let's go to the mapping tab. We're going to add a distance traveled map. And we're going to map that to, yes, the gravity strength. Let's put this on between 0 and 100 centimeters distance. And we'll make it something like this, which is saying when the particles begin to move, they have no gravity, no gravity until it moved about, uh, it's about four, 40 centimeters. And then they'll gradually get more and more gravity. So by the time they've moved 60 centimeters, they'll have full gravity. Let's have a look. So again, we need to move our cylinder to nudge that chain reaction. Yeah, and now we're getting this really cool chain reaction spreading across our plane. If we want this to speed up, we just need to speed up how quickly the particles get bigger. So to do that, let's go to the NX scale. And look, instead of having this over 100 centimeters distance traveled, let's put it over 50. And now they should scale up twice as quickly. And we should have a much more frenetic sim. Let's have a look. Move our cylinder. Yeah, look, so that's really fast now, isn't it? Excellent. So we're getting this really, really cool spreading chain reaction of physics here. One last thing to point out. If you want to render your constraints or mesh them, what we need to do is turn them into an X-Particles trail. And to do that, we go to Generators and we bring in an XP trail. The trail needs to know what emitter do you want to make the trail from. So let's drag in the emitter. But to get the constraints, we have to use an algorithm. And if we come in here, there will be, yes, look, a constraints algorithm. Bring that in. And now we need to tell them what kind of constraint it is. And remember, in our NX constraints, it is the birth constraints we want to make a trail out of. So let's go back to that trail object, to the algorithm uh, constraints, and then look, check birth constraints. It's gone green. So now this is an X particles trail. This can be rendered or it can be meshed with the XP spline mesher. And you can do whatever you wish with it. And there we have our really cool chain reaction constraints sim.